on guard. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you about the last part of the armor of God. And it's actually not even really armor, it's the sword of the Spirit. And for a soldier back in the day, their sword was very important. The rest of your armor, you know, just pretty much helps you to not get dead. But your sword is what you fight with. And the Bible says to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And the Word of God is your Bible. The Bible is God's Word. And the Bible says that the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. And again, the Word of God is not actually a sword, right? This cardboard sword I made is definitely not the Word of God. It's just an illustration as part of the armor of God. So it's important that you not, you know, take your Bible and, and attack people with it, either physically thumping people on the head with a Bible or metaphorically using your Bible as a weapon against people. Because again, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is against the spiritual forces of evil. Our battle is against Satan, the father of lies. And so there might be people who need to hear God's word. They need to hear scripture. We all do, really. But we don't use our Bibles to attack people. We use our Bibles to attack the lies that Satan has told to them. And to attack the lies that Satan has told to us. The best way that you can fight against the father of lies is with truth. And truth is found in scripture. And just as it was really important for a soldier to train with his sword... It's very important for us as Christians to train with our Bibles. We need to read our Bibles. We need to learn what it says and, and memorize Scripture so that we can know the Word of God and how best to apply it. If I had the best sword in the whole wide world up on my shelf, it wouldn't do me any good if I didn't know how to use it. Right? In fact, it would be very dangerous. And the same is true with our Bibles. If you have ten Bibles in your home, but you never read any of them, they're not going to do you any good. Satan loves to lie. It's like his native language. But some of the best lies have a tiny little bit of truth in them. And in fact, Satan can use parts of the Bible to lie to us. Yeah, did you know that? There was a time in Scripture where Satan tempted Jesus. And one of the ways he tried to tempt him was using Scripture. He used actual real stuff in the Bible to try to get Jesus to sin. But because Jesus knew his Bible, he could see through the lie. Satan took Jesus to the top of the temple and he said, the Bible says that God will send his angels to protect you so that you won't hurt yourself. So you should jump off of the temple to prove that you're the son of God. And in response to that, Jesus said, the Bible also says that you should not put the Lord your God to the test. And that's why it's so important for us to know what's in our Bibles. It's so important for us to read our Bibles for ourselves and to learn it. Because if you just know a little bit about your Bible... That can be almost as dangerous as not knowing your Bible at all. So my challenge to you guys today is that you would practice with your sword of the Spirit, that you would read your Bible. And if you can't read yet, find somebody who can read and have them read the Bible to you. I really can't stress enough how important it is to know your Bible through and through. Because if we're going to be effective in this spiritual battle against Satan, the father of lies, we're going to need to know the truth of God. And that's found in Scripture. Put on the full armor of God including the sword of the Spirit, so that you can take your stand against the spiritual forces of evil.